Hey everyone. So today we just finished our first leg workout for month three of 80 Day Obsession. And um, it was a surprising workout because we added in the sliders with weights and there were some movements where when Autumn was showing it, I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. But the one thing that she keeps sharing with us is that we can do it. And to keep trying and you know, really what the say how the saying goes that you know, the only way to fail is if you don't try. And so there are some moves that I had to modify and some moves that I surprised myself um, when I actually tried it out. So many times people look at things and think, ah, can't do it. And so they never bother. And that's when you have to be really self-aware and focus on what you know, you're doing and get out of your own head because literally what you feel, what you say, your brain is going to follow. So if you say you can't do it, your brain's not going to make you, you actually do it. And so really being self-aware of that voice and really asking yourself, you know, is that true? Do I know I can't do it? And usually you don't know, and it's just a, a protective mechanism. So today was leg day. Um, I burned 400 calories. It was absolutely amazing. Um, one thing is that I do is that I feel that exercising is like my time, that it's my time to work out. It was like 45 minutes a day. This is my time to focus on me and my needs. And I do a lot of thinking. And today I was thinking a lot about parenting. Um, and a lot has to do with the fact that I just got off the phone with a fellow uh, mom who parents a lot like me. So if you followed my story, you know that I've been on my own since I was 15. I had a childhood that was uh, not really rare because I talked to so many people who have lives like mine, but um, I didn't really feel like I had the best childhood growing up um, or a lot of support. And so it's been very important to me to be involved with my kids. I feel that there is a fine line and there's a lot of terms out there like a helicopter mom and, you know, a controlling parent or, you know, all these different things. And you really have to find what works for you. But I had parenting that uh, was not really out of love. It was controlling. Um, it was about the way things looked, um, following rules based on religion. Um, and if I didn't follow them, then the, the punishment was harsh and it got physical. Um, my parents who raised me, uh, my adoptive parents didn't trust me. Uh, so everything that uh, I did, they were, they would snoop through my diary, snoop, snoop through my bag at nighttime, show up at school. If a friend called, they would listen in on the other line. I mean, no matter what, it was like I couldn't win. And as a, a teen, I eventually left home and then just did whatever I wanted to do because it didn't matter. They had already pretty much deemed me as a bad uh, kid. And But then I see parenting, and I saw it growing up when I was a kid, and I see it now, where parents... I can't say that they didn't that they don't give a damn because I don't know how they feel. I don't know how they parent. I don't know how they were raised, but they're really not involved that they give their kids stuff to shut them up like brand new phones. They give them money and, you know, let them go to, you know, the, the I don't know, wherever it is. Go skating, go to the movies, hang out with friends every weekend or pawn them off on their grandparents and they're not involved. Uh, when my kids got cell phones, I um, had a rule that we would always um, check them and you know, I always trusted my kids, and so many parents I, I hear don't, tr you know, don't check up on their children. And for me, it's not just about uh, like that. I don't trust my kids because I ha I do have faith in myself that the things that I've shared with my kids, because I'm very um, brutally honest, I'm open about everything. Um, about my past, the things that I've done, so that they know. And um, but when. I think that checking a kid's phone is really important because it's not that your kid is doing bad, but you don't know what they're exposed to. And there was a mom that I was talking to who was, um, what, it was part of a group text where uh, kids or girls my daughter's age were saying really inappropriate things, and he didn't even know what that meant. Um, and so the mom had to explain to them and uh, him what it was, and I... I'm really glad that I have cultivated the relationship I have with my kids because my kids have came home and been like, mom, so-and-so did this with a boy at the movies or so-and-so did this at school or is wearing this or, you know, sent this. And, you know, just the, about two weeks ago, my daughter um, got a Snapchat from a boy asking if she sent, a, if she sent, he asked, he's like, you send pics? And she's, 
uh, I'm open with her, but she's still pretty naive. She's like, what do you mean? And he's like, nudes. Do you send nudes? So she does know what that means. But she was like, no. And so she came right to me. But there's so many people out there who don't know that maybe their kids are being exposed to stuff and there's a lot of peer pressure and um girls i mean can be just as bad as boys it's not a just a boy thing but i feel that that a lot of parents don't really pay attention to what their boys are doing because they assume that it's the girls they have to worry about and i've heard this all the time like oh i'm glad i don't have a daughter uh that i don't have to worry about you know my son getting pregnant who cares you know but it's the same thing is parents need to teach their sons respect and how to treat you know girls because that will end up how they treat women and you know I, I my my daughter said something yesterday that like you know I'm not gonna be treated this way and I felt so good that I was a girl that was mistreated from the time I was a child as an adult I've had problems with relationships I have been disrespected by men women in relationships and friendships um, in employment situations and I and I believe that because of what I've done for the last five and a half years of strengthening myself and really becoming open with my children, apologizing to them for things that I've done um, as a very imperfect parent and being very open with them about my uh, promis promiscuity as a, as a kid, my drug and alcohol abuse, the, the, the friendships that I've had with the, with the wrong types of people, the... the um, you know how I t uh, cut off the 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 relationship that I have with my adopted parents. They're very um, I don't know. They're very wise to what goes on, and so um, I am so glad that they have that where they have the confidence, they have the self worth, they have the ability to communicate with me about what's going on, and like we're on the same level of understanding. And you know, I was talking to a friend the other day, and. Uh, we've been working with life coaches and he uh, a life coach had told him you know like I think that some 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 limiting belief some story that you've been telling yourself started as, as a child and it, it possibly came you know at, at around this age from what they were dig digging and he was like you know maybe I was made fun of and you know he really couldn't remember but he was like and then he kind of blew it off and he was like you know uh, all kids get picked on he was like so you know that that seems like silly that it would bother me and, and I explained to him that I've learned that here here's the difference is yes I, I think that everybody out there every person has been picked on or ridiculed at school or, or, or something I mean if you haven't I don't know even living under a rock but if you grew up in a household where you felt like you didn't have a place you had no self-worth you were a piece of shit then you go out into the world and whether it's another child you know um, in whatever grade you're in who says something it's just reinforcing what you already feel and but then if you have kids where my kids uh, they're uh, they are in the same environment any other kid is in but because of the way I've raised them because the way we've changed things in our household because of the way I educate them because of the way that I talk to them because of the way that I explain things to them that somebody might start some drama with them, somebody might call them something, somebody might pick on them, but they're so secure with who they are and they also know how to handle things and they also understand that some of these kids are just going off of the way they've been trained and they're hurting because maybe their parents were mean to them or their siblings were mean to them. So the difference is is that it, it where, how you feel coming from home is how you interpret what goes on in the outside world. If your parents have built you up, that you can do anything, that you can be anything, and if they're walking the walk them, themselves and they're giving you the skills, and then somebody goes on and tells you you're a piece of shit, you're gonna be like, yeah, whatever, but I'm not. But if you're abused at home and somebody says, man, you're stupid, you're like, yeah, I really am. I know this, it's a reinforcement. And so this is something that I really shared with my kids. I, I, I made them watch 13 Reasons Why. I've been very open with them about, about the world because, you know, I think so many people, my parents wanted to shield me. It was like, don't do drugs, don't have sex, don't do this, you can't listen to rap music. And, and I was always curious as to why. And I, I'm a naturally curious person. I ask a lot of questions. I don't put my stamp on things easily until I fully understand it. That's why what I do in the health and fitness I'm so passionate about and I'm obsessed with is because I've, it makes sense to me. I, there's tangible proof that it's what I say it is and I'm the tangible proof of it. And so they, my parents would just say, don't do this. Well, naturally, 
I think that kids do get, come in contact with drugs, alcohol, sex, all these things. Well, if you have not been told why and just told not to, number one, the human nature is you're going to be curious. But for me, the only reason I thought not to do any of those things, have sex, sex at a young age, drink at a young age, smoke cigarettes, do drugs at a young age, was I was going to get in trouble. And yes, that was pretty scary because I would be beaten and just the feeling of that I disappointed them, that I shamed them, uh, that was just a, that carried a lot of weight on me. But the first time I did any of those things with sex, I felt connection, I felt loved, I felt uh, like I mattered for the first time. When I did uh, drugs, I felt it gave me like this mental vacation from the pain that I had. And I also felt a connection with my buddies and I felt like, uh, uh, like I was in control of my life for that moment because I had been so controlled as a kid. So in my mind, I was thinking like, y'all people told me not to do this and not to do that, but it's good, it's fine. But nobody told me the effects of it, how it would ruin your life, how it would ruin your health, how it would ruin your reputation, how it would ruin the way, you're, the way you respected yourself, all those different things. And I've explained those to my kids so if they're ever faced with that, they'll know the consequences, not just that mom's gonna be mad or you could go to jail or something, or, you know, but they, they understand the full consequences so that they can make an informed decision. And, that, that, and I think that that is the most important thing is really talking to your kids and not assuming that they understand why not to. And, you know, I've really realized you know, recently while I've been writing my story because I'm working on a book and talking so much about my sobriety is that I've always, you know, kicked myself like, why did I get in drugs? Why did I get in alcohol? Why did I make all these mistakes? Why, 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 why? You know, I wish I could go back and change it. But now I'm like, no, because it gave me this experience. It gave me ways to fail for it. And it gave me a way to be able to talk to my kids where I truly believe that they're going to make mistakes. And, and I hope they do because you learn from mistakes. But I don't think that they're going to make the same mistakes I did because I've talked to them so openly. I have two stepkids and I have three children of my own. And I really feel feel confident that they're not going to make the same mistakes that I did because I've been so open and honest with them and they've seen the effects. And I've explained to them that how things aren't just about right now, but down the road, it matters. And it, it's not just about you right now, but it influences everyone around you, whether you believe it or not. And so I, when I look at it that way, I'm like, I would take all of those mistakes and that, those, those, that pain that came with it over and over and over again if, if I knew that that would be a way for my children not to have to go through those same things. Not that they're not going to make mistakes or screw up, but I, I, would not, I don't want them to go through what I did. But I just encourage you as parents to really be open with your children about things because if you don't share it with them, they're going to learn it, learn it from somebody else. They may not learn how to deal with it. They will, you don't want them turning to somebody else. You want them to be able to feel like they can open up to because if I had felt like I could speak to my parents, I probably would have talked to them when I was sexually abused. I would have talked to them when I felt suicidal. I, I would have talked to them. Maybe I wouldn't have been feel, felt suicidal. I don't know. I would have been able to talk to them about anything or everything about the way I felt about my self-worth. And so those are the things that, that our children are going to figure these things out and be faced with them and encounter them. So arm them well and arm them with confidence and share with them from experience and show them cause and effect, not just the don't do it. And I feel that I was raised in the era of the, uh, uh, you know, say no to drugs. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. I mean, that was the only thing that I was taught. Like, drugs are bad. This is your brain on drugs. And I'm like, as a logical person, I'm like, my fucking brain is not an egg and I'm not going to put it in a frying pan. So that made no sense to me. But when I talked to my children about the effects of meth, of, you know, smoking, of alcoholism, and, you know, of, you know, having sex in an early age unprotected, I mean, they understand that. They're not just thinking, like, oh, a frying pan of egg. Like, I get the metaphor, but, like, that's the generation I grew up in. Not a lot of, uh, education just the uh, war on drugs and so really be I just I don't know I can't tell anybody how to parent but check your kids phones man like especially snapchat because I know that if I ha found out rebel was asking some girl at 13 years old to send nudes um, we're gonna we would have a lot of problems and you know and if I knew that my daughter was sending inappropriate things to a boy talking about wanting to have sex with them we would have problems. And so you, 
Your children might not be doing anything, but you might want to see what other children are exposing them to and uh, bringing up to, to them. So anyways, that's just my little soapbox thing on parenting today. Um, it's something that's been on my mind. And, and like I said, when I'm working out, that's my space to really to you know clear my mind of stress but I really think about a lot of things that are going on in my life and how I can share them with you share them with my kids apply them to the a book that I'm writing about my life but you know th this is real life stuff and I really hope to open people's eyes in all areas of life so that we can make a positive impact on the next generation so we're not like our parents that generation are like oh these kids are just this or that i don't want to be that way I, we have the ability to change the world and we have the next generation in our homes right now so why not educate them instead of blaming them for where the world's going like generations in the past have done with us um at, at, at our age so anyways have a good day everyone